Do you remember the Ouya, the micro console that was meant to disrupt the video game industry? It was discontinued in 2015, and by 2019, the online storefront was shut down, rendering the hardware completely useless. However, in today's episode, we are going to take a look at a homebrewed storefront that restores most features of the infamous little device. This means not only will you have access to your personal library once again, you'll also be able to browse and download any game that was available on the Ouya storefront back in 2015. Before we jump in though, let's revisit the Ouya's launch and failure, and for that we need to go all the way back to 2012. In 2012, a change was approaching the video game industry. The micro console was gaining traction as an alternative to more conventional console hardware. The term micro console refers to a low cost, low powered device that is capable of running more casual games in the living room on hardware designed for phones, such as Android and of course iOS. The Ouya was announced in 2012 as a new game console and would feature an NVIDIA Tegra 3 SoC and an ARM based CPU capable of running Android version 4.1. A Kickstarter campaign was launched to gain interest in the project with an initial fundraising goal of $950,000, but in the end it would eclipse that goal and end up raising over $8.5 million in funding. Even to this day, the Ouya is still one of the largest earning Kickstarters in history. In 2013, the hardware would be released for $99, and at the time there was some surprising amount of power in its small form factor. The NVIDIA Tegra 3 SoC we already mentioned, but the hardware also comes with a 1.7 GHz quad-core ARM A9, 1 GB of DDR3 RAM, both wireless and wired Ethernet connections, HDMI display output up to 1080p, and 8 GB of internal flash with an additional micro USB and regular USB ports for external storage. Not only this, the Ouya would be an open platform. The company would also encourage things like sideloading of games, including emulators and apps, and at the time, this would attract many people to the console, including developers. The platform was built around the idea of being easy to develop games for. It would also require no licensing from the hardware maker, and it would use Android so games could be easily ported from phones over to the Ouya. This all seemed to be a successful slam dunk in 2013. But as we know, the Ouya ended up being a failure. After a very successful Kickstarter and launch, it was discontinued in 2015 and would only sell around 200,000 units. Most of these were Kickstarter backers. The reason for the failure of the Ouya was for a few reasons. First of all, the hardware would have its issues. The controller is simply put, a disaster. The entire shell feels cheap and flimsy, the buttons regularly stick, and the triggers feel very cheap and often stick in place. Not only that, it suffers horrible delay and lag. Pairing the controller to the console is handled by Bluetooth, but it doesn't do a particularly great job. The controller itself could also be purchased separate. The problem was, purchasing a separate controller would cost you $50. At the time, this would be the same cost as a DualShock 3 for the PlayStation 3 and this was exactly half the cost of the system itself. But it wasn't just that. The Wi-Fi connectivity was abysmal, often dropping out and having poor radio reception. The UI, while functional, was slow and laggy. There was also the infamous shipping disaster. Kickstarter backers never would receive their units when they were promised. In fact, most of them would receive their units after the Ouya went on sale in retail stores upsetting many backers and rightfully so. But perhaps the biggest reason for Ouya's failure was simply put that the games weren't very good. Weekend projects like this would often be pushed up to the Ouya without a second thought. The idea of an open platform would mean that many developers would simply port over their projects to the Ouya, but there would be no checks and balances to curate the quality of releases going in. Of course, there would be some exceptions, but at the end of the day, it was already too late. Around six months into the Ouya's life cycle, developers would start to leave the platform. Both Sony and Microsoft had releasing new hardware, and they were courting indie developers to both the PlayStation 4 and Xbox indie programs. The Ouya had no one killer app or mascot game that could save the hardware. Towerfall is considered the best of the games on the Ouya, and it is quite good, but it would only sell around 7,000 units. 
The system is also tethered closely to the Ouya store, so any downloads and purchases would suffer from online-only DRM. This of course wouldn't be a problem while the store was up and running, but after the failure of the Ouya, the company sold its assets to Razer Inc. in 2015, who would maintain the hardware with software updates and the Ouya storefront. But in 2019, they would shut down its storefront, all accounts and backend services, which effectively made every single Ouya unusable at that point. There would be no offline method to play any game, as every single app would require the Ouya to report to the store's website and perform validation. Now, I think many of us, including myself, ended up buying an Ouya because it ended up being a pretty good emulation box at the time. I was coming from the original Xbox and the Ouya pretty much did everything that the OG Xbox would do from an emulation standpoint, all in a small little box for $99. It also had enough power to run PlayStation emulation, as well as even things like Dreamcast and PSP games. It wasn't perfect, but it was definitely the next evolution of emulation that was running on these kind of micro consoles. And of course, RetroArch was also available. And all of a sudden, this Ouya, even though it was a commercial failure, ended up being pretty good for hobbyists, especially those who enjoyed emulation and ROMs. And ultimately, it would be the very same group of hobbyists and enthusiasts that would save the Ouya from becoming e-waste. In 2019, after Razer had sunset the Ouya storefront, work began on a homebrew storefront that would bring back connectivity to the console. Released in 2020 by developer Christian Whiskey, known as Stuya API, this is a very simple update to get up and running. Simply connect a micro USB cable to your Ouya and the other end into your PC. From here, you'll see the Ouya device in your Explorer window. Then simply create a file called Ouya underscore config dot properties with the following two lines. And then copy this file into the root folder of the Ouya drive. If you want a more concise guide on this, I'll leave a link to Christian's website below where he walks through the process. From here, if you simply go back into your game list or the discover menu, the Ouya will pull down the data from Christian's server and allow you to play your existing games once again, as well as download and play any of the existing games on the Ouya storefront. Every single one of them has been archived and preserved and made available here. As well, Christian is continuing to maintain the store and providing updates to the back end even encouraging developers to continue to make games for the Ouya with game jam competitions and other such things. So why bother with the Ouya in 2022? Well, of course, this is not going to replace any of your current systems, but it's here purely for nostalgia and revisiting what games were developed for the hardware at the time, as well as looking at the storefront, user experience, and the thought process of the developers. It's easy to see why the system failed, given its lack of quality control on its storefront, but even in 2022, it's still a serviceable emulation and retro system. But I would definitely recommend plugging in a wired controller as the input lag on the stock controller over Bluetooth is abysmal. While the Ouya was a failure, the micro console paved the way for bigger players in the industry to develop their own. Nvidia with the Shield TV, the Apple TV, and the Amazon Fire TV, to name a few. Even Sony entered the market with the PlayStation Television. The market for the Ouya was undoubtedly there, but too many mistakes ultimately caused its demise in 2015. But still, it's great to be able to go back and revisit the hardware all over again in 2022. And a big thanks to the Ouya community out there for making it happen. But it is good to go back and revisit this stuff. And look, at the end of the day, having a service come back online, just like we saw with Insignia with the Xbox Live service, is only a good thing. And big thanks to the Ouya community for basically just making sure that this service has been preserved for future generations to come. But we are going to leave it here for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave relevant links to everything that you saw in the description below if you want to get set up with your own Ouya service and making sure that you can connect to the server alternative as well. But if you like this episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.